And good evening, everyone, and welcome to high school football playoff action tonight. It's the Midland High Chemics and the Dow High Chargers. Sid Allen, along with Frank Altimore, or should I say for this week, Terry Collins' brother-in-law. That's good. That's what you're known as. But, uh, Coach, it's deja vu. Last week it was the regular season finale for these two teams. But it's a new season now, either an affirmation for Dow High or a second chance for Midland High tonight as we start the playoffs. Well, Sid, both teams have had a great season. And, unfortunately, one of them is going to end tonight. But we, we kind of feel, felt this was going to happen last week, that the winner was going to play the loser. And with, they're really playing for home field advantage, which really there isn't any. So this rematch is going to be an interesting to see, interesting in fact to see which team is going to improve over last week. Now, even though it would be hard for Dow to improve on 49 points, there were some factors in that game last week that would stop them from really advancing far into the tournament. And, and then for Midland's case, uh, they've got to do some things that uh, maybe they haven't done all year. So let's take a look at some of the keys of the game that we have. And uh, let's bring this up. And this is for Dow High. Of course, they got to avoid the letdown. I mean, it, that's a big win. And, and it, it's got to carry over for the next few weeks as we go. So they got to avoid any sort of letdown. They have to stay on the attack. They can't sit back on their laurels and, and think that Midland's going to let them do all the things that they let them do last week. And finally, you have to have a playoff football mentality. And that is that it's going to be cold. It's going to be rough. We just got to be a better team as we go along. So as we go to Midland, they've got to be more physical. I was uh, pretty disappointed in Midland's physicality last week. I thought Dow took it to him on a number of occasions. And I know that that's something that the coach has worked on this week. And the bomb. Uh, you just can't let those 6'5 and 6'6 receivers run down the field without a little bit of under help to, to slow them down a little bit. So that, that's one of the ways you protect against the bomb. And number three, it's got to have a run game improvement. Again, that deals with that physicality that we talked about in step one. you got to be able to run the football, which means that your offensive line's got to get off the ball and make some hits. Now, these are the things that happen, you know, and so... Uh, as the game goes on, we're going to see the battle of the quarterbacks, DeWilt and uh, Bruce Mann. Both of them have, been, have, have had excellent seasons. Both had, a, had a, a, a banner night last week, and uh, Mann threw for 100 more yards, but that was uh, big bombs. Uh, I thought uh, DeWilt was uh, very sharp in many of his passes to Virgil Walker. So as we go along, let's see what happens tonight, and let's see who who the winner is and who the loser is based on a lot of these keys that we just took a look at. Are we just going to throw defense out the window tonight? You know, Sid, I don't think so because it, it's going to depend a lot on open field tackling. And so it's not necessarily throwing it out the window, but if you can tackle in the open field and slow these guys down, I always think that when, when you play wide open offenses like these two, somebody's got to shrink the game a little bit. And, and that is do not let them get easy touchdown, make them work. I mean, if, if they want to throw the dink and run, uh, that's fine. But you tackle them and keep the game going as best you can and try to avoid giving the other team the big play. Now, I don't think – I think we're going to see – I didn't think the defenses were so bad last week. I just thought the offenses were just spectacular. From an emotional standpoint for Midland High, they lost last week to their arch rival, their arch crosstown rival, Gosh, you don't want to do it twice in one season, well, do here, you? Here's the thing, though, Sid. In, in my years of coaching, it was extremely difficult after losing the last game of the year to come back into the playoffs and win. And, and, uh, and the thing is that when we weren't in the playoffs, it took a whole year to recover. So that, 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 there's, there's definitely that hanging out there. Now, we're on a tape delay, and everybody knows that. Are we going to be able to keep you in your seat tonight while the Mets are hosting the Royals? Uh, as long as you tell me the scores. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Doesn't Terry start. Collins is uh, Frank Altimore's brother-in-law and uh, very close, and uh, we're all pulling for him uh, in Midland to see if they can't uh, get the World Series back on the right track. Well, it, it, they're exciting. So it's a big game tonight here. Uh, two really good teams, two really good offensive-minded teams that are going to try and find some defense. 
and hopefully we can. Let's go down to the field now for tonight's national anthem. Frank, uh, for those that may have not followed this season too closely or even follow high school football closely for that matter, tell us a little bit about these two coaches. They're really quality guys, aren't they? Uh, both are outstanding, outstanding men and great leaders of young men. I really, Jason uh, had played for me back in the early 1990s and later on uh, we were lucky enough to hire him as an assistant coach and he's done just a spectacular job as a, as a head coach. Um, Eric Methner came on the Midland High staff with uh, Terry Wilczek and Gary Joswak and has been just outstanding. He's a, uh, just a stand-up guy. And uh, his records have been just fantastic over the years. He's kept the tradition of Midland High going. So, yeah, I, we're very lucky in Midland to have two great coaches like that. One point on the uh, Dow High Chargers. These Chargers are coming off right now an eight-game winning streak. They lost their season opener. They reeled off eight straight victories. And in all but one of those games, Frank, uh, they won by double digits. Uh, so they're going to be hard to knock off. It's going to be very difficult. As I said, if, if Midland can run the ball, which has been Dow's Achilles heel all year, if Midland can run the ball on, on Dow, then Midland is going to stand a chance. And if Midland can protect against the easy touchdown, the long bomb thrown down the field where the wideout jumps up, catches the ball over a shorter defender, then that's that's another story. We'll find out right in, I think, in his first series of downs as, uh, as to what's going to go on. Well, Midland High has deployed to receive the opening kickoff, so they'll get the ball first and see if they can get their hands on it and keep it for a while and keep it away from the offense of uh, Dow High and Bruce Mann, their quarterback. So we'll see uh, if Midland can pass this first test on offense tonight. Back deep to receive the kick. For the uh, Kimmicks, Vondre Warren and Luke DeLong. And Johnny Wilson has it teed up for the Chargers and we are underway. End over end kick taken on the far side of the field by DeLong, who's up across the 30 and knocked down at about the 34 yard line. So that's where Midland High School will put it in play first and 10. So we'll see what Coach Methner comes up with here to start the game and try and uh, use a little ball well, control, as Frank said, to try and get a running game generated. Very good field position for Midland right now. I, I've yet to, qu I always question those little short pop-ups, unless they can go high, high in the air, those little short pop-ups guarantee that your ball, the guy's going to get the ball outside the 30-yard line. Warren is the deep back behind quarterback DeWilt, and he gets the handoff, cuts back over the left side, and picks up some pretty good running room up to about the 37-yard line. Now, it's an interesting formation. Midland's gone away from their true spread and has put in uh, tight ends and uh, they're going to block the ball. They have fullback in the backfield. So I think Midland is going to run the football. 
I think they're going to say to Dow, okay, stop us. It'll be second and six at the 37. Midland with good field position to start this game. And this time they send trip wide receivers out to the far side and a single wide receiver to the or to the far side and trip wide receivers to the near side and the snap goes back to DeWilde who's gonna keep around the left side up across the 40, he's hit there and goes down at the 41 yard line. And it's gonna bring up our first uh, interesting third down play of the game, third down and about two for the Kimmicks. See there's a case there Sid where Midland spread them out across the field and had the quarterback keep the ball because in essence there was no outside contain for Dow on the back side. Just underway here at Midland Community Stadium, Dow High and Midland High in our first round playoff game. This time DeWilt drops back into the shotgun, takes the snap and hands off and a first down yardage run up to the uh, 45 yard line that time by Warren. So uh, they're up and going with their first first right. down and their first bit of ball control. And as I said, shrinking the game taking the ball and running the ball at Dow High, right at them. Chemex were not a good running team this year. They only ran for 129 yards a game, which was seventh last in the district. But they made it up in the passing as they were the number one rated team in the district in passing. So this is a bit unusual for them to run the ball. DeWilt with the pitch back. Coming to the near side, trying to find a gap and being knocked down quickly. Coming up to make the stop that time for Dow was Spencer Stevenson. Luke DeLong was the ball carrier and he's gonna actually lose about three yards back to the 42. Here's the problem when you, you, you're running plays that you haven't run all year. So you have something a little bit different. When you do that, there's a, there's a timing factor always involved that you kind of try, especially on that kind of a play, wide lane, you're looking to lane it up so that you can get into that that area where you can uh, turn up the field and make some yardage. That time, Dow strung it out beautifully. Quarterback DeWilt is limping just a bit as he got the instructions from his side of the field. He's back on there now and takes the snap, fumbles it, picks it up quickly, out in the flat and the ball is wide of the intended receiver, Vondre Warren. So it's gonna be third and long, and this is where Midland did not wanna be, third Absolutely. and 13. Absolutely, see that first play, uh, again, they gained a lot of yards running at Dow, as opposed to running around Dow. The moment they tried to run around Dow, Dow's quick enough to handle that side of the play. Now look for Virgil Walker in this case right here. Ball at the 42, third down, 13. A little bunch formation on the lower part of the screen. Here's DeWilt dropping back and we've got a whistle and a flag and we'll check that out. It's going to be a legal procedure against Midland High and DeWilt uh, coaches limping noticeably as he goes to the far side yes, of the field. Yes he is and that that really obstructs their run game because faking off the, the dive play and then keeping it is a big play for them. So with the penalty, Midland High is back to the 37 yard line. They need to get to the Dow 45 for a first down. So it's third and 18. This time they split Martin Money to the far side of the field and three receivers split to the near side. Man in motion is Walker and he gets the handoff trying to get outside, but he is gonna be stopped quickly short of the 40 yard line and well short of the first down and good pursuit that time by the Dow defensive unit and Midland is gonna have to kick for the first time tonight. That was the long and he is now limping. So that, uh, that didn't work out as well as, as Midland wanted. That whole series right there after the first, after the first down was not very successful. Money will kick it away. Justin Cook will watch it fall and take a Midland bounce inside the 30 and is gonna be down at about the 25 yard line. And that's where quarterback Bruce Mann and the Dow High Chargers are gonna put it in play for the first time. It's gonna be interesting to see now Dow's opening series. It's always good to see what you're trying to do in the beginning of the series to see you know, first off, defensive formations and how well they're able to read it. 
and what offensive plays are you going to use to kind of, you know, set up for later on in the game? Keep your eye on uh, number one for Dow High. That's Mike Robb, the all-everything wide receiver split out far to the right side. And man is the lone setback. Here come reset now two backs with man who takes the snap, rolls to his right, and hands off instead. And picking up short yardage that time is Johnny Wilson. That's an interesting little, what they call, wraparound draw where sprint out one way, come back the other. The, the problem with it is it's a little better later in the game, but it's still three or four yard gain. I'd be happy with that. Ball moves just across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Second down and eight. Here's Mann with another handoff and again, Johnny Wilson this time picks up about three yards up to the 30 yard line and Dow's gonna have third and a relatively long here. Well, Midland is playing a, uh, what they call a little bit of a sky defense where they have three down linemen and eight guys standing up. So it's, uh, you're, you're susceptible to the run here, but you have to be able to, for the offensive linemen, they have to get up to the second level and block the middle linebacker, block the, the other players that are involved. Third down, four needed. Money is the man in motion to the far side. Here's Mann, a little swing pass out on the near side, across the 35 and up to about the 39 yard line for a first down, Dow's first of the ball game. That was a terrific move by Johnny Wilson. Uh, the, we've got some different people playing different positions. I see where, uh, Walker now, instead of being a defensive end, is playing a linebacker. And I'm also looking at for Max Clemish, the middle linebacker, and he is, he's in there. That's good. Man standing back at his 35, gives the handoff to Wilson. He's across the 40, the 45, and up near midfield. Could be close for another Dow first down. And they're going to spot him down, let's see, at about the 49-yard line. So still a good pickup of nine yards that time. Well, it's kind of interesting. Both teams have decided we're just going to run the football. Well, we played half the first yeah. quarter. And I know. Seen any no, passing I at haven't all. seen a pass yet. Well, a little, little swing pass. Second down one. This would be a good opportunity here to uh, open it up a little bit. But instead, the handoff goes to Wilson, and he is smacked down right as he crosses midfield. Enough for the first down, but a good play that time by the front of the Midland High Kimmicks. First down at the 49-yard line as we tick near the halfway point of this first quarter, 6.05 left, and no score yet. This time, Rob goes to the far side. And Devontae Stein splits to the near side. Two in the slot and money goes in motion. And here is Mann. And looks like it's gonna be a pass from the wide out, but instead he runs it across the midfield stripe down to the 47 yard line. That time it was Justin Cook. And uh, that looked like a lateral that time, it, Coach. It, and looked, it, was, it was a forward pass, but it was just so slow and developing. And you know you had all four receivers out here, which gives you three blockers and a, and a receiver, but. Cook has uh, thrown one pass this year and completed it. Man out of the shotgun on second down. Now he's gonna run it, finds a block or two and gets down to the 45 yard line. Pick up of about three that time and it's gonna be third down now. And again, an opportunity for the Chemex defense to make a stop. Right now, Vincent Walker is doing an outstanding job as a linebacker. He made a, an excellent play there, recovered back and made the play. This is, a, this is a very big play right here. Third and six for the first time, Dow is in Chemex territory. And uh, this is what Coach Methner told me earlier in the week, that one of his keys is to stop Dow on third down and get the ball away from them. So he's had one opportunity so far. Hasn't worked so well. We'll see what happens here from the 45-yard line. 
Here's Mann. He's going to keep it across the 45, the 40, across the 35, and down near the 30-yard line. At the 31, it's going to be a first down for the Chargers. Well, this is the big problem you have. If When Dow's offensive line gets up onto that second level of linebackers, you have eight people standing up. So if you block the linebackers, you're in pretty good shape to get uh, significant yardage because there's nobody on the quarterback. Cook splits to the far side. Man, he'll keep it again and not much doing there as coming up to make the tackle quickly for the Kimmicks was number 21, Martin Money. So a good stop that time by the Kimmicks. Leaves Dow with a second and long, about 11 yards, close to the 33-yard line. Lone setback, goes in motion, it's Money. The snap to man, looking to his left, over the middle, and completes the pass. Justin Cook made the reception that time, went a little bit high for it, but no. came in with a reception and another first down for Dow. This is the beauty of is the beauty of that pass. We're going to see a, a free, uh, he got right in the center of the zone. Justin Cook did. And you'll see a nice protection there by the line and got the ball to Justin Cook. And he last week I said he was one of my most underrated players on the Dow team, and he comes up consistently with that play right there. He's a terrific possession receiver. Rob on the far side, Stein on the near side. Here's Mann and a backwards handoff to Money, or to Johnny Wilson, excuse me, across the 15, the 10, and inside the 10-yard line goes Johnny Wilson. I see that was the same play we opened the game up with the other way. So we have, uh, th and this was a very good time to do it. Dow, uh, Dow has now spread Midland out. Here comes the replay on that. And you'll see a little wrap around where Johnny is, makes a little bit of a fake. See that right there's the little, what they call wrap around draw. Now we have quads at the bottom of the field, quad stack. This is a very interesting Players formation. Players all over the field. <laughs> very difficult to figure out what the heck's going on. And so man keeps it. You no trickery from him, gets down to about the five yard line. It's just got to be terrible to try and defense uh, setups like that. Well, as I say, the only way you say it up is you get more people, which is what Midland's done. But on that play right there, their down linemen did a great job of clogging it up and not going away. They're going to they're gonna definitely try and take man away from his run game. He, he's the leading rusher on Dallas' team. Second and goal now at the five-yard line of the Kimmicks. Dow High threatening for the first time tonight on their first possession. And Mann this time will hand off to Wilson trying to get outside to the left across the five and into the end zone. For the touchdown goes Johnny Wilson. And the Chargers are on the board first with 2.38 to go in the first period. Now you see that was an interesting drive. Minimal amount of passes, one, really one play. And watch Johnny Wilson make this run. Johnny Wilson's got tremendous feet. Absolutely great feet. He comes back in. You'll see this here. You're going to make a little little move right here. That little move right there allowed Devontae Stein to get a block. And Johnny does set up his blocks in a, in a terrific manner. And Johnny is going to kick the extra point. He is the leading scorer in the Saginaw Valley. And he's all over it tonight with yeah, all seven of Dallas points as the Chargers take a 7-0 lead with 2.38 left to play in the first period. So... Uh, not exactly how we expected to see it happen on this first drive, nope. but Coach, uh, very effective. Yeah, and this, here's that replay again. I, I want you to watch what happens. Uh, great job. They pulled the guard to give a little protection. But here's Devontae Stein allowing the, the block to occur, and Johnny just got in the end zone. Good job. 7 Good nothing job Dow. Way. Very physical by Dow in that first drive because they ran the football a lot. By the way, fans, the broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the Michigan High School Athletic Association and MCTV. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the MHSAA 
and the MCTV network. And Wilson kicks it away for the Chargers. And now there's a fumble by Walker and uh, there to recover it, but now it slips away from him and we'll see as they unstack it about the 22 yard line. Lots of scrambling that time as uh, Luke DeLong actually was the receiver for Midland High. And it looks like the Kimmicks will retain possession. That ball was everywhere. Here's the kick coming down the field. Looked like he caught it in the old uh, caught it in the old bread basket there, but right. right through his arms. Now it's gonna bounce out away and fortunately uh, for Midland they recover and they'll yes, begin this series been, from their own 23 yard line. That would have been disastrous. Again, Midland's in their I formation with the quarterback under the center. Here's DeWilt straight back to pass, looking deep, trying to go to DeLong, but he overshoots the intended receiver. As defending back there was Justin Cook for the Chargers. Good uh, work by Cook. There you see the uh, intended receiver, Luke DeLong, who's caught 37 passes coming into tonight's game. Second down and 10 for the Chemex. I'm going to be interested in watching Luke DeLong tonight. He's been suffering from a severe thigh contusion. And I saw him last week in, in earlier in this first series, he was limping, but seems to be running fine now. Here's DeWilt out to the wide out and across the 30 yard line and getting up to the 34 yard line for a first down is Virgil Walker. Nice play that time by the Kimmicks, picks up 11. And they move the chains on the far side of the field. Virgil Walker with his 55th reception of the year. Clock winding down to the two minute mark here in the first period. Time goes fast when you run the ball hey, a lot. When, <laughs> when you don't stop the clock. Here's the wilt in the gun. Looking out in the flat and completes it up at the 39 yard line as Martin Money came out of the backfield to make that catch. Nice pickup of about five. DeWilt last week passed for 216 yards and three touchdowns. Had a good game as uh, Frank mentioned, but uh, just not enough. I can remember days when 216 yards was a season's worth of uh, yardage. Listen, that's, that's, that's the truth. Hand off to the second man through and up to the 45 yard line for another Midland first down. Now Dow had two guys stunt in the same hole and, and they left the, the, others, the other gap wide open and allowed a first down to occur. I mean, we, you could see where the ball was gonna go. The linebacker went in the same hole as the defensive lineman. Along the ball carrier that time, it's first and 10 for the Kimmicks just across their own 45 yard line. And DeWilt with the first full house uh, backfield gives off to DeLong again. And he is stopped as he crosses the 45, gets to the 46. This is almost that uh, left half, right half, full yeah. fullback uh, alignment. Yeah, this is a uh, this is called a triangle backfield. And this is the, the replay of the play as he tried to cut it back away from his. See, he ran away from his blockers there, into a host of dialed defenders, and now it leaves you with a second and long, and you're still in that. Triangle look. Now they're in a straight T look. Wow, this goes back a few years. And DeWilt's going to pass from it, looking downfield, trying to go to his man to long, but well overthrown as he was well covered that time by two Dalvin defenders. Justin Cook, one of them. So it's going to be third down now and nine. 40 seconds remaining here in the opening period. 
Well, Sid, I, I really believe the long is still hampered. I mean, I've seen him run past that. He just, he's not, he's not able to run to the ball. I, I see him pulling up a little bit short, uh, which tells me his leg is still bothering him. But he's a warrior. He's out there playing hard. Empty backfield. Third and nine, and the ball is fumbled by DeWilt, and let's see as they scramble for it at the Kimmick 43, and the Chargers have it. First turnover of the ball game goes to the Dow High Chargers, as it looked like quarterback DeWilt just didn't ever find the handle on it. Right. And unfortunately I, I fumbled he, it forward. I, I think he lost sight right there where it was at, and then it bounces forward. And you, you know, remember he said he was limping a little bit, Sid? He was a little short coming up as he saw the ball, like he couldn't push off to get to it. This is where Dow usually goes right for the throat. Chargers with great field position at the Kimmick 42 yard line. Here's Mann and he hands off to the running back. It's Wilson trying to get outside and stop for maybe a yard loss that time as Kimmick's doing a good job up front. Number 48, Greg Landis in on that stop that time for Midland High. Boy, Landis has been quite a machine this year for the Kimmicks on defense. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Five fumbles for uh, one touchdown. He's a nephew of uh, a quarterback of mine back in, in the 80s, uh, Derek Landis. And with that play, the first quarter has come to an end here at Midland Community Stadium and the Dow High Chargers on top of the Midland High Kimmicks by a score of 7 nothing. And Frank, I don't think that was really what you and I expected uh, in terms of action in the first quarter. Well, I expected it out of Midland. I expected that they were gonna try to slow the ball game down by running, but I didn't expect it out of Dow. Uh, they definitely took their foot off the pedal right now and are content with just being able to move down the field. Now remember last week, the score at halftime was only 21-14, and Dow had scored right at the end of the at the end of the half, or end of the half. Yeah. So, you know, we're really a little bit on that same pace right now. It's just not as wide open as we're we thought we would see. And Dow with a golden opportunity here early in the second quarter to kind of start breaking this open. So Midland High definitely wants to prevent that if they can and somehow overcome that turnover they just had. So both teams out on the field now to begin the second quarter of action. With the Chargers at the Kimmicks 42 yard line. Man in motion money. And here is Man out in the near side, completes the pass across the 40. And down to the 35-yard line goes Mike Robb with his first catch of the night. Dow really likes that. They like to overload the field to the field where you have room to run, throw the ball out to their best receiver, Mike Robb, and have the other three guys block. Yes, Robb had a huge night last week, nine receptions for 200 yards and four touchdowns. Also had an interception in the ball game. Same play the other way. Here's Money. Wilson. Uh, Wilson. Get Johnny those two Wilson. mixed up. They look the same uh, size-wise. And down to the 25-yard line or thereabouts. See, those are pretty easy passes, and they're allowing, they're allowing their skilled athletes to go. And again, and you remember what I said, open field tackling is critical in this game. Man takes a snap, fakes the throw, and now keeps it himself. Picks up some pretty good yardage close to the 21-yard line. Greg Landis in on the stop that time for Midland High. If, if man makes a move forward and stops and throws the ball, there's going to be an easy touchdown. I mean, the moment man starts running and makes a move forward, the entire Midland High team is collapsing on him. This time the handoff to Wilson coming to the near side, trying to cut back and find some room, makes a nice spin move, but there's a lot of chemics waiting for him. First in on the stop was Shane Mayer. And then a host of chemics right behind. 
So third down and about five coming up for the Chargers. And again, an opportunity here, Frank, for the Chemex to make a stop and maybe hold Dow to a field goal attempt. Well, I, I don't think Dow will go for a field goal. I think they're in, they're in four down territory. They have normally been. Here's Bruce Mann, flushed out of the pocket, goes into the end zone, and the pass is caught for a touchdown, it looks like. Well, there's some uh, dispute there. Let's see. Could have been intercepted. It was even. intercepted. Intercepted. They are a long way from us. It's hard to see, but apparently the uh, Dow receiver and the Kimmick defender both went up. And apparently the uh, Kimmick defender, who we now didn't we're catch, get a better look we'll on, the on replay, replay here. The terrific defensive play. And as you can see, they got. And there's a lot of open running room here for Mann when he makes his move. Stein had it in his hands and Looks like Gavin taken Burrell. away. Gavin Burrell just took it away from him. So a great play by Gavin Burrell saves a score from Dow High and now DeWilt back to pass for the Chemex looking downfield. Has a man, but right through the hands that time of the intended receiver, Mason Dominowski. Looked like he almost got his hands on that one, but it was sailing pretty quickly. And it'll be second and 10 for the Chemex. Nine minutes, 40 seconds left till half. Somewhat surprising seven nothing score thus far with the Chargers on top of the Chemex. Long and Walker split to the near side and the handoff instead Goes Vondre Warren and he gets outside but can't really uh, gain too much momentum that time. Well, here's the problem, Sid, and this is where you come in, it comes into play when you run wide plays. And that is, you got so many guys standing up that they're able to run to the ball a lot easier. So Dow has tried a couple wide plays that have not been successful. Midland now has run two wide plays that have both produced negative yardage. It's, it's gotta be north, south, not east, west tonight. That one lost three yards, and it's third down and 13 now for the Kimmix. And DeWilt straight back goes over the middle and has his man, but it's not going to be enough for the first down, as making the reception that time was Virgil Walker and the Charger defense there to greet him after a fairly short pickup. And the Kimmix are going to have to punt it away. That play had a chance to be intercepted, and uh, the defender run for the tackle instead of the ball. Martin Money will kick it away. Good snap. Pretty good punt and a fair catch at the 48 yard line. And that's where the Chargers will put it, apply, put it in play once again. Excellent again, field position. Field position. It's a field position game tonight. So the Chargers, who uh, just had their way last week with the Kimmix, especially in the second half when it came to the passing game, struggling just a little bit this time, but uh, using that, trying to get that run game established a little more. Wilson in motion to the near side. Here's Mann looking down the sideline. Has a man, and the pass is caught this time. Looked like Devontae Stein inside the 10 yard okay, line. This is a terrific pass and just a terrific catch by Stein. He's gonna run down this now. Now he's all by himself out there, which forces that defender to go one on one. The ball is laid up. Take a look at it on that back shoulder. And now it's, it's gotta be a play. So now it's inside the 10. What a great pass run yeah. effort. Yeah, it really was. Curley did a great job of saving the touchdown. Ball is at the eight yard line, first and goal for the Chargers. And there's off. movement on the Kimmick line. 
And it looked like uh, Vincent Walker may have jumped a little early. So you take a look, Walker is everywhere. I mean, you, just, you have to find him because sometimes he's a linebacker, sometimes he's a defensive end, sometimes he's a nose man on defense. So that'll put it down just inside the four yard line. First and goal for the Chargers. Bruce Mann in the gun. He'll follow that big line. Now he tries to go outside looking for that pylon and he's inside it for touchdown. the touchdown. On a three yard run by Bruce Mann, the quarterback and the Chargers jump out 13 nothing now. Now, he did that pretty much on his own because the lead black is uh, Spencer Stevenson. And as you see here on the turn, Spencer Stevenson goes into the hole Man doesn't like it. The line stayed with it. Now he's going to run to the perimeter and scoot in the end zone for a touchdown. Now here's Johnny Wilson to try the point after. It's on the way and, and it's on the board. 14-0 Chargers. Well, you can't hit, you can't hit the kick. That's all there is to it. Again, this is you watch Stevenson, he's gonna go up into the hole. Now the hole is there, but man didn't like it. And so he says, okay, let's see if we can go out here. The other thing I don't like is where the ball is in the right hand. You, know, you gotta switch that hand just a little bit. But that is really great instinct oh, uh, on his part. He, he can't teach that. I mean, either you got it or you don't. You know, uh, talking about Bruce Mann, coach, uh, He's just a junior, and a lot of people don't realize that maybe, but he's just a junior now. In all your coaching, in all your quarterbacks that you had, how does he stack up with the other juniors you had? Oh, as a junior, I, I think he's spectacular. I mean, we've had some very, very good quarterbacks at Dow High, but uh, he has a knack. He, has, he, he can zip it, he can float it, he can run it. It's just... Uh, a little okay. pooch kick this time, and uh, Midland High takes it back to where they'll have excellent field position at about the 43-yard line. Now, I can understand sometimes the pooch kick. Okay, now just understand this part. People wonder why I do that. Dow's return kickoff team, Dow's kickoff return team, Dow's kickoff team, earlier in the year was awful. I mean, teams would, would run him back way down inside Dow's territory. So the way to combat that is, well, first off, get other players in there, maybe they'll do a better job. But if you kick it short enough, then, then there's no way you can set up a return. It's everybody for themselves. And you saw what happened with uh, the first kickoff where the ball was fumbled. So so we'll see if Peyton DeWilt can get the Chemic offense untracked here with the handoff, though. It goes to uh, Bondre Warren. And he picks up a couple of yards over the right side, crossed the 45, and now we've got a late flag. And we'll see what this uh, call is all about. It uh, probably is going to be a bad one, though, Coach. It's going to be 15. It's just a matter of who got the 15. Personal foul against Midland High and Dow High, so. Uh, now, I have to tell you, I, last week there were a lot of unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. And it, I know this game gets enthusiastic, but it sometimes gets on the edge of being chippy, where, let's take a look at this and see what happened here. Well, obviously a disagreement between two players there on the far side. Now, oh, right there they there. are, right there. Right there, you know. The, one guy doesn't want to be held, and he kind of kicks away from the other. So it's back to second down and eight as DeWilt looks to the left, goes over the middle and hits his man. And good yardage now across the 35, inside the 30, and going to be taken down at the 29-yard line is Virgil Walker. Well, he's a big target, Coach. He is, and you know what? you got to look for him. 
You have to look for him. That's a big play for Midland High. Virgil Walker, not only got in the, he got in the middle of the zone, and he's just gonna sit there, right there. And right there, the linebacker lost him. He just can't lose him. He's gonna have to find him. So the Kimmicks threatening their first big threat of the game at the Dow 29 yard line. Trip receivers to the near side, lone receiver to the far side, and the handoff instead goes right up the middle to about the uh, 27 yard line. Goes the running back, Vondre Warren. Okay, number five, Vondre Warren. It's hard to see, five, six, 150 pounds. And, and he's, got, he's got excellent quickness. One of the things that's happened tonight is, and that is that the Wilt was one of their leading rushers, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to carry the mail tonight. He's, he's, he is limping, and he looks a little bit slowed up. Here's DeWilt overshooting his intended receiver on the far side, Martin Money. So that's going to make it third down and seven. And an important third down play now for the Kimmicks offense. See if they can grind their way back well, into this ball game. They've got two downs to get seven yards. If they go for it all, then they've got one down to get seven yards. So if they make a little bit of pass and, and run, catch and run, but again, I'd look for Walker. And again, three wide receivers to the near side. As DeWilt in the gun looks to the near side and throws, and the pass is intercepted by Rob. And he gets it back to the 10 yard line, but that time, Mike Rob. Such a great pass receiver. Well, you're gonna, interesting. Here he is doing a bump. He's doing the bump on the bottom there. And he's gonna get back into the play. Now watch, he's gonna get back into the play and look at that long arm reach out and get the play. Tough turn of events for the Midland High Kimmicks and down deep in their own territory. So they have to be a little careful here and we'll see if the Kimmicks defense can come up with any magic this time. So that's two turnovers on drives down in the field. Dow had one, Midland has one, two interceptions. This though doesn't bother Dow being down in here. They're just as happy. And here's Bruce Mann trying to weave his way through the Kimmick defense and does a pretty good job up to the 14 yard line. Well, you didn't tell me he was a running quarterback. I, I try to keep some things from you, but yeah, he, he's a, uh, he has run for uh, 497 yards up to this game. He's the so he's Chargers a leading rusher. Yard, yeah, he's, he's the leading rusher. Second down about four. As Wilson comes in motion to the near side. And now goes back to the far side. And again, Mann will keep it across the 15, the 20, cuts outside, and is finally met as he gets near the 25 yard line. That's a big first down, as, as you can see here, getting out of that hole, and now you're on the 25 yard line. Uh, you're in possibility of changing the field position again. Face mask against middle. So we're going to see a 15 yard advancement. And this, this happens a lot. You got a pretty shifty running back here, who's, by the way, 6'2, 205. And so right here, you're going to see the face mask come in to play. And that is just enormous right there. Well, it gets That's Dow out of a big hole. 15 yards, right. Puts them at the 39 yard line where they can really open up a little bit. Man, hands off this time to Johnny Wilson around the right side, trying to get outside, but Kimmick's all over the place that time. Led by Luke DeLong, who came up to make the stop. Make the stop. Midland is trying to continually change their defenses. Just then they've gone into their old four-man line, which they've used most of the time this year, as opposed to that uh, spread out sky defense. 
Johnny Wilson came into this game as the second leading rusher for the Chargers with 394 yards and eight touchdowns. He's been pretty well hemmed in tonight though. Okay, now we're into the, the wide open defense, the three man line. Second down, 11. Man, flares it out on the far side and picking up some yardage across the 43 yard line that time. Well, this is the thing you to get impressed with with receivers. Uh, that was uh, that was Cook catching the ball, of course. But what happens is the speed after they catch the ball. You know, and this is the, the most important stat I think in football today, and that is yards after the catch. And you catch the ball, and then they immediately accelerate. Third down now, and six. for the Chargers. And Mann looks to the near side and is gonna call a timeout with 4.45 left in the first half, 14 nothing Chargers. Okay, that's a good timeout right there. Uh, Mann looked out there and he saw everybody standing up. Very good timeout. By the way, fans, be a part of the conversation about high school sports. Grab your cell phone and follow the MHSAA on Twitter at MHSAA. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram for in-game updates, event announcements, and high school sports news around the state year-round. You can connect with the MHSAA today. A message from the Michigan High School Athletic Association promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Four minutes, 45 seconds left in the first half. The Dow High Chargers on top of the Midland Kimmicks in this first round playoff game by a score of 14 nothing. And coach, everybody was telling me what wide open, wild offenses we could expect, and it's been pretty tame so far. Pretty tame so far. We haven't seen, well, we saw the one big pass to Devontae Stein over there. Here's Mann out to the near side, and Rob, that big receiver of his, picks it off at the 40-yard line for another first down. Again, he cut right in the middle of the zone. Rob let him, or uh, man let him get open and then gave him a perfect strike. And again, you're looking at a six foot six target with probably six foot six arms. And that's a, he, he's not only tall, but he's long in the arm with his wingspan. So he makes some pretty easy catches that other people would find very difficult. That was a very big first down right there for Dow. Clock ticking with 4.20 left in the first half. Devontae Stein split to the far side, Rob to the near side, and Mann will hand off to Johnny Wilson trying to get outside across the 40 yard line and he's hemmed in there on the sideline by the Kimmicks defense. Leading the way that time, Greg Landis, whose name we've called on several occasions already. Pickup of about a yard on the play, second down and nine for the I will Chargers. say this, I, I think Midland's much more physical this week on defense than they were last week. And as physical as I've seen them all year, uh, the, the game against Lapeer took a little bit out of them. They look like they're back in this, this, this stride again. Here's a man going out to the far side at the 35 yard line inside the 30 and down to the 25 yard line goes Justin Cook. Now was that, a, that, that had, that's a terrific throw. His intended receiver was covered. So he went to the secondary receiver who broke away. Again, Justin Cook. You know, that is just not a play that you would uh, normally think you see from a high school quarterback. I would see that out of a, out of a college big time quarterback, yes. Where you go to the secondary receiver and you have enough on the ball to get him there. Just short of the 25 yard line, the Chargers with a first down and two minutes, 55 seconds left in the first half. Here's Mann with a handoff. Johnny Wilson cuts it back, has some running room this time across the 15, 
and down to the 10 yard line and still grinding away inside the 10. Great run that time. You gotta love Johnny Wilson. Uh, I mean, he's, Wilson. his feet never stop moving. And that play has, has gone and is not gone. This time he got to the perimeter, he turns it up, he makes some good moves. He is a very special running back. And if you think he's a little bit on the smallish side, he's 5'9", 165 pounds. And that is a, that is a, maybe a little with your shoes on and <laughs> weights in your pants. I mean, Johnny is a, he, but he is scrappy. I mean, he is scrappy. First and goal at the eight yard line. Here's the handoff to Wilson going the other way and has a clear sail oh, into the end zone. Moves. Leaps into the end zone for the Chargers. Third touchdown here in the first half. Well, that'll make the highlight reel. We're gonna see a nice replay here. This is, again, a terrific, watch the cut. All right, so there's the handoff. Again, great blocking. And he gets, gets into the seam. He accelerates, he sees the end zone. He does know where the end zone is. You know, there are a lot of running backs that they have no idea where the, run, where the end zone is. Johnny knows where the end zone is. That's why he's the leading scorer. Not only does he score the touchdown, but now he kicked the extra point. Second time he's done this tonight, and the kick oh is uh, not a very good kick, and then blocked as it got to the Kemic line. So it's no good, and with two minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half, the Dow High Chargers on top of the Midland High Chemex by a score of 20 to nothing. Well, Sid, I'd like to tell you that I am truly surprised at the fact that it's 20 to nothing. I thought Midland would come out in the first half and, and really give a little better defensive showing. And, but, you know, you just cannot stop a quarterback who's determined like man is. And you have to have exceptional defensive backs that have quickness and Midland's defensive backs are pretty good but they are 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and they're going against 6'5", six, and 6'6", six, six receivers. So that, that there's that disadvantage right there. But uh, Dow has definitely been a lot more physical both offensively and defensively at this point. But we do want to mention also that the uh, Midland High coach or quarterback Peyton DeWilt has been hobbled just a little bit here in the first half and Oh, as I, as, as I said, the, the, the question is that, see, he's, he's one of their leading rushers. So now you've taken away that fake to one back, and he keeps the ball and goes around the corner, which has been very successful for them. The other thing is I, I kind of wonder if it affects his uh, plant foot when he goes to throw the ball. I saw two balls that, that have sailed over the head of receivers, and sometimes that when you have that ankle or lower leg injury, that plant foot uh, doesn't have a chance to go. That was Vondre Warren on the return for the Kimmix, and he got it up to about the 39-yard line with 2.09 left in the first half. Kimmix will put it in play with good field position and probably pretty important that they drive it down to try and get a score before well, halftime. I, I think it's imperative that they get a score before halftime. Here's DeWilt looking far downfield, throws and completes it to Walker. Nice catch, goes up for it See, at again, the 48 yard that, line. There's that six foot five receiver being able to go up into the air, make a play. And you see there's a good move right here, good break on the ball. Nice throw. Very nice. First and 10, Chemex. DeWilt, good rush this time, and the pass is knocked away and almost intercepted that time as Jared Mohammed had a bead on it. Coach, that was a little scary for the Chemex fans. At that point, I thought Jared Mohammed was going to get his hands in there and make the interception. That was very close. Minute 33 left, first half, third down. About a yard. And Midland obviously is not going to run the football. They're going to try to get their one yard by throwing the ball. Good time, and the pass is complete on the far side. Good catch by DeLong. 
That was, a, that was a good pass, very good pass. So that moves the sticks on the far side with a minute 27 left first half. Ball is inside Charger territory at the Dow High 48. This time three wide receivers to the near side and Martin Money split to the far side for the Chemex. Here's DeWilt coming this way, completes the pass at the 40-yard line, and Mason Dominowski goes down at that point. Eight-yard gain, clock will continue to run. See, there's again, uh, in this situation right here, yards after the catch. So Dow's willing to let you catch the football, but they're going to tackle you without much yardage. It's the yardage after the catch that becomes important at this point in the game. We're under a minute. DeWilt looking to his right, completes it to DeLong, and he is undercut at the 35-yard line on the far side. Good first down. Stop the clock. Eric Huss with a nice stop that time to uh, keep the damage minimal. The clock stopped on the timeout with 49 seconds left. Kimmicks will have it on the 35. So it's like you said, uh, bend but don't break right now. Right now, just catch it. Let them, if they're going to catch it, catch it, but tackle them. There you get a good now, look at the... Uh, in the middle of that lineup is Phil Ligab, who is... Uh, virtually retired, but still uh, volunteers. And he was my defensive coordinator for a number of years, and he is one of the brightest defensive minds going and coaches outstanding defensive backfield play. Uh, it's, it's a shame that he's retired because he really knows what he's doing. Everybody has coached with you. Oh, when you're old. <laughs> when you're old, Sid, everybody has coached with me, yeah. Well, I've coached at both schools. So that, uh, I was 16 years at Midland and, and 20 years at Dow. So I've, I've had a lot of these guys when they were children. First down for the Chemex, DeWilt. Deep over the middle, has a man to long, and he can't quite bring terrific, it in. Terrific, terrific, terrific by Mohammed. Mohammed really terrific. reached up at the last second and knocked that away. Looked like Martin Money had it. I honestly thought that was a touchdown. This is really a good play here. Good throw right on the money to money. But see, Mohammed sticks his arm up and that's a terrific defensive play and excellent blocking. Dow had the stun on and Midland picked it up. Second down 10, DeWilt over the middle and the pass is incomplete. Vondre Warren, the intended receiver. That's going to make it third down with 38 seconds left. With Chargers are just back there everywhere it seems. Yeah, it is. They're playing. They're playing three eight now. Not only are they playing the sky, but take a look who's deep in the middle. Mr. Rob, number, number one, and that's uh, that's designed to stop the bomb. And you just look for Vincent Walker. That's I'm looking at him over here, and I'm saying, okay, is, that's where they're going to go. Will plenty of time in the middle, and it's. Incomplete, but uh, late flag coming in as Vondre Warren, the intended receiver. Interference. Could be a penalty coming up against the Chargers here. Pass interference against Dow High, so that will move the sticks for the Chemex with 32 seconds, still plenty of time. A lot of time. And with that walk off, they'll spot but it right at the 20 big, yard line. Big penalty for Dow. It is imperative for Midland to score on this drive. The game may be decided right here. 
DeWilt out in the flat, completes it, and out of bounds quickly at the 15-yard line is Martin Money. Money with 20 receptions for the year coming into the game, so he's a favorite target of DeWilt. Money is a, is, a, is a really an underrated player. He's, he's only a sophomore and has, uh, has great hands and is an outstanding blocker. Personally, I think he'd be a running back. I mean, I, I'd love to see him run the football more. Second down, and now we have a whistle and a timeout called by Dow as they want to make sure everything's all set with 28 seconds to go in the first half. Chargers lead it 20 nothing. Midland High threatening. That was a good timeout for Dow. Here you look at some of the contingents that is here tonight. Charger fans on the near side of the field. And there's the Kimmicks on the far side. Let's see if we can't do just a little bit of business here, Coach. Promos. Some high school game officials get involved because they decided it was time to stop complaining about the referees as a spectator and become one. They found it to be a rewarding and humbling experience. We always need more officials to get involved. Go to MHSAA.com. There's help wanted, just whistle. A message from the Michigan High School Athletic Association promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Second down. DeWilt goes into the end zone. Receiver there and out of bounds. Ruled incomplete. And uh, not a very happy money that time. Martin Money, we couldn't exactly see, but coach, let's take a look at the replay here. Remember what I said, Martin Money has got some terrific moves and it balls up in the air. Boy, he's and there. And he is there, but he's out of bounds. He comes down out of bounds. So third down now for the Chemex. And we're down to 22.6 seconds in the first half. So it's been the longest minute going, hasn't it? It really has. Empty backfield. And Dow's going to call and, you know, these are good timeouts, and I'll tell you why. You can't carry them over, so you might as well use them here in crucial situations. This is third down, and uh, and you know Midland's not going to give the ball up. They're going to go, they're not going to kick a field goal, so they're going to go two plays here. But this is the big one right here. Dow High scored first. To build up on that 20 nothing lead, Midland High has threatened once or twice, uh, once in particular. Now, I've been impressed with Methner, Richards, Kapia, Tassi, and, and Partish, and their blocking. I mean, there hasn't been a sack tonight on either side. No, both quarterbacks both have been quarterbacks well protected. Have and been well protected, this, especially on this drive, because Dow is really driving to get to the quarterback. Ball at the 15. And a third down play coming up. So two more cracks at least for Midland High. DeWilt by himself. Looks over the middle, throws, and completed at the five yard line. But what a hit that time that Luke DeLong took and credit him for hanging on. And DeWilt also took a pretty good hit. And now a timeout called by Midland High. Boy, that was Boy, Now this again, now they put the stun on. Here comes the stunner clean, but he doesn't put his hands up in the air. If he puts his hands up in the air, it's going to be a little better play. But what a hit right there, Cook on Luke DeLong. Boy, Justin Cook did deliver and what one. A fact that, the fact that DeLong held on to the ball after that hit, that's a terrific, terrific play all the way around. DeWilt, DeLong, and Justin Cook. I don't know if we could back that up just a little bit and show uh, where DeWilt was hit. Looked like it was uh, 
A little bit high there, but uh, I don't know if we can show that or not, but DeWilt took a pretty big shot just as he delivered the ball. Well, maybe we'll see it on one of the replays. Here we Here go. We. Here we go. Oh, he took a hit. Watch this. A little high. First and goal now for Midland at the Dow High four-yard line. A lot of time, 18 seconds. You get three plays off. Here's DeWilt in the corner of the end zone. Walker has it for the touchdown. Virgil Walker with his eighth touchdown reception of the year. And the Kimmicks on the board with only 13.6 seconds left in the first half. Now you had a pretty good idea that this was going to happen. You got a good bump out there, but again, the, the defender got caught. He, he went and stopped instead of staying with his, his ball. And Walker makes a great catch in the corner. Gavin Archibald now for the point after, and it is good. And with 13 points, seconds, six seconds left in the first half, it's a little bit different ball game now, 20 to seven. As I said, it was imperative for Midland to score on that drive. Just, and it took a lot of time. Uh, there were a lot of plays. I shouldn't say it took a lot of time. There were a lot of plays in that drive. Well, that's a credit to the Midland High offense that oh, stayed yeah. with it stayed and with uh, it. didn't make any mistakes. And we're content to move the ball down the field in small chunks. And the Kimmick flag is flying for the first time tonight. So the Chargers will deploy number 14, Johnny Wilson, and number 20, Joey Lindahl, to receive this kick. Now, Midland Dow thinks it's going to be an onside, and I think it's going to be just a pop-up or a, a low-line drive, one or the other. And that's what it is. Yeah. Lundahl at the 25 goes down on the knee and with 12.4 seconds left, we'll see if uh, they're just content to sit on the ball, which I'm sure they will be, Coach. But you never know. At the halftime, Fenton and Holly are still tied at center. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Dow has decided to do here. It would not surprise me if Dow took a knee. And then again, it would not surprise me if Dow went for the bomb. I mean, either way. Rob is coming to the near side of the field, so we'll keep our eyes on him. And split to the far side They're is Devontae go Stein. In the gun, here's Mann. Looking, 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 and now he's going to be trapped at the 25-yard line. It looked like he wanted to blow out of that pocket, but too many chemics there. And with that play, the first half is going to come to an end here at Midland Community Stadium. And the Dow High Chargers on top of the Midland High chemics by a score of 20 to 7, but a bit of a comeback by Midland High there that in was the closing a big, moments. That was a big touchdown right at the end of the half. Just enormous. They're going to halftime 20 to nothing, and then Dow was going to get the football coming out of halftime. So that was a that was a crucial and a well run, well called series for Midland High. And for Dow High, they got twenty points on the board and that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points to make well, up. Well one thing if 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 you want to look at not only did they score the touchdown, but they kept the ball away from Dow for that's a long right, time. For a long time. So a good first half of football. We got another half waiting, but uh, we're gonna go down to the field now where a couple of the best bands in the land are going to perform. Gentlemen, under the direction of Mr. William Monroe, Mr. Chris O'Connell, Mrs. Karen Welser, and percussion specialist Judy Peterson, it's the Midland High School Chemic Marching Band. 
This year's band is led by drum majors Elia Danielson, Ali Kikafer, Marina Dadobny, and Katie Wenban. Our drum captain is Haley Hendricks. Band, are you ready? Band, take the field. have given the world some of the best music ever written. Music from royal pageantry, folk songs, rock, classical, and movies have originated in places like Dublin, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Manchester, and London. Tonight, we begin the heroic music from the British Isles. Scotland the Brave and Rule Britannia are followed by the theme from the greatest spy of all time and his 23 movies. Rounding out our opener with a license to thrill, it's the Chemic Band and James Bond.
song. Ladies and gentlemen, we open our portion of the show with Uma Thurman by Fall Out Boy. Senior drum major Brindley Lenhart will lead the band. the Dow High Pon Pon Squad to the field as senior drum major Andrew Wong leads a very exciting Tom Wallace arrangement of Lips Are Moving.
And now, the H.H. Dow High School fight song. this Midland High, Dow High, MHSAA playoff football game on MCTV 189 on Charter Communications. You can also find this game on Channel 99 through AT&T's U-Birds. This game will be cable cast on the following dates and times, Friday, October 30th at 11 p.m., Saturday, October 31st, and Sunday, November 1st at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And after this weekend, the game will be shown on MPS TV 190. Check the Sunday Midland Daily News and Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org for more dates and times. This game will also be shown on the school's YouTube channel. Coverage of this game is made possible in part with donations from the athletic booster clubs at both Midland and Dow High Schools. And let's take a look at some highlights from the first half, Coach. Well, again, this is a quite a little run here by Johnny Wilson. It's the first touchdown. Little stutter step, great block, and got himself into the end zone. And this is the play that goes into the corner. Devontae Stein trying to get away, and he has the ball, but it falls back, and Gavin Burrell takes it away. quite an interception right there and then this is a play by right coming right back to Devontae Stein next play and uh, next time Dye has the ball and Devontae Stein catches a nice play and then man goes in the end zone around the corner a little bit of giddy up makes a good move it's quite a throw by Burrell into Vincent Walker he's, he's quite a target quite a target and that there again is my concept of yards after the catch. And this is the tip. The ball's tipped in the air. And we get Mike Robb making a nice interception on that. And then again, here's Johnny Wilson making a turn. Watch this And leap. he's going to squeeze right in and into the end zone. And then we're at the end here where nice pass to Walker. And uh, good, good, good first half. Excellent first half. And I'll tell you something, that was an outstanding halftime show by two of the best bands in the state of Michigan. That was very enjoyable. You know that uh, interception by Midland High in the corner of the end zone may have been the big play of the first oh, half. Oh, no question. That would have made it 28 nothing or 27 nothing, and that would have been a very difficult comeback. This is really not, two touchdowns is not a difficult comeback. It really comes down to what's going to happen in this first series of the third quarter for both teams. There you see part of the Dow High band that is going back to their seats. Uh, as you said, though, Coach, a really good halftime show to go with a good football game. So what more could you want here as playoff time is upon us and a 27 score in the first half, 20 to 7 with Dow High on top. Now in the second half, 
think that strategy changes any at all? I mean, uh, I'm not sure we saw exactly what we thought we were going to see in terms no, of the offensive output, but I think, you know, you, you are, you, you dance with Ubracha. I mean, I, I, I'm watching Midland uh, go into a number of different power formations, and really that's not Midland right now. And you saw that at the end of the game, uh, end of the half, where they were able to move the ball by making short, concise passes and move the ball down the field. And I think we're going to see more of that. I'd be surprised if I saw the power formations reappear very much. Let's do just a little bit more business here. The coverage of this football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation studio training class on the second Saturday in November the 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The cost is just $45, which includes the annual yeah. access user fee. Call 837-3474 or come down to MCTV studio in the lower level of the Gary St. Dow Memorial Library. You can learn more about MCTV at www.cityofmidland.gov slash MCTV, and you can follow MCTV on Facebook. You're also invited to MCTV's Honors Night on Thursday, November 19th at 6.30 p.m. at Creative 360. It's MCTV's annual event to thank the people who create the shows like this one that you can see on Midlands Community Access Channels. And again, I want to remind you that coverage of this game is made possible in part with donations from the athletic booster clubs at both Midland and Dow High Schools. So we're pleased with that and glad that uh, you can all join us for this game. Unfortunately, it's going to be the last high school football game for one of these teams tonight. Right. And right. for a bunch of seniors that have really put their hearts and souls into these programs. That's the problem with the playoffs. It's one and done. And you move on. And actually, it's one and done all the way through. There's only one team that ends the season happy in, uh, in the division. Chargers, as we mentioned earlier, trying to keep alive an eight-game winning streak. Lost their season opener to Mount Pleasant and reeled off eight straight after that. Midland won their first six in a row and then had a little bit of tough sledding in their seventh game, won their eighth, and then lost last week in the regular season finale to Dow High. So the Kimmicks trying to rebound just a bit. And we'll see how things go here as Archibald has it teed up for the Kimmicks. And Dow High will receive the opening second half kickoff. High end over end short kick, fielded at the 11, fumbled around. It's on the ground, and let's see as they scramble at the 20 yard line. Unstack them, man. Boy, that was it. Dow's got the ball, but that was so lucky because the ball was kicked. You can't mess around on kickoffs. You got to get back there so that you're moving forward. A little uh, drama to begin the second half right, here, but the right. uh, Chargers have it at their own 21. I told you, Sid, every kickoff's an adventure for Dow High. I mean, it's just an adventure. Sometimes they catch it and run it way back. Sometimes they don't. But it's been an adventure all year. Well, we'll see what Bruce Mann has up his sleeve as we begin the second half of action. This time he fumbles it and grabs it, but he's... Rolled under at about the 15, scrambles out to about the 18. Well, there's an example of what I don't understand. Uh, they haven't been under the center all year. I, I, I shouldn't say that. They haven't been under the center all game. So you go in the second half, and all of a sudden you're under the center, and that's exactly what happens. I mean, if you're a shotgun team, you're a shotgun team. Second down, 12. in motion and the handoff and we got a flag on the far side of the field as Eric Huss was the ball carrier. Usually that's uh, illegal procedure by the offense. Yep, it was. Not on the line. It's, too many it's an illegal procedure. Huss started uh, stumbling around just a little bit. Looked like he had a, a little bit of room out there. But it wouldn't have mattered anyway as they'll step off five against the Chargers here. And Midland High. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was the claim. And I'm gonna say they're not gonna take the penalty, so it's gonna be third down now. And about nine. So a little strategy here from the Chemex to see if they can get the ball back early. So Dallas has flubbed two plays in a row. And here's Mann straight back to pass. Looks out in the flat and completes the pass on the far side at the 33-yard line to Justin Cook. See how nice and easy that throw is? That, uh, that easy gas that he has. Beautiful pass by Mann. So the Chargers overcome a little adversity to start the second half and pick up a first down at their 33. Robin Huss come to the near side, and Devontae Stein goes to the far side. Wilson in motion as Mann looks to Rob, completes it at the 30-35, and he's wrapped up at the 40-yard line. Good stop that time by Max Clemish. Good sure tackle. Good recovery by Clemish. Still a pickup of close to seven on the play. You see everybody in the media is here tonight. It's the place to be. Second down three for the Chargers. They've moved it out to the 40. Wilson in motion to the far side. Now comes back the opposite way, fakes the handoff, and Mann will keep it across the 40, and he's going to be wrapped up there after a short game. And another good defensive play by Max Clemish. Number two, Bruce Mann for the Chargers on the quarterback keeper. Brought down by number nine, Max Clemish. So and third down and two. Midland's a better team with Max Clemish back in the lineup. He was a stalwart all year long, he was injured. He and DeLong both were injured after the uh, Lapeer game. And he's back in the lineup and really an outstanding middle linebacker for Midland. Two good plays in a row yep. for the senior linebacker. Third and two. Man fakes the handoff to Wilson, keeps it himself right up the middle and finds good running room across midfield and into Kimmick territory. You know, he's quite a little weapon, isn't he? he I would say so. Throws yeah. the ball beautifully. Makes good decisions. Strong, yes, strong runner. And now they've kind of taken disaster and have made it into something pretty good. Those first two plays of the half were, were an absolute mess. You know, it's one thing to have a lot of talent to be able to do things, but uh, boy, when you got that football savvy, yeah. that's, uh, that's special. He's a gritty player, I'll tell you. He, he doesn't shy away from a hit. Wilson in motion to the near side. Man hits Rob coming across the middle at the midfield, trying to get outside across the 40, down to the 35, and he's going to be wrapped up by a bunch of chemics at that point. But a nice gain and another first down for the Chargers as they put a drive together here to open the second half. That's called a jailbreak screen, and it uh, it really, it, the slower you run it, the better it is because it allows your guys to get out in front. Watch the number of guys that are out in front on the line here. Here they come. See now, there's the now there's the jailbreak right there. Catch the ball. Look at the blocking that's going on all the way through, and then you're going to see that come all the way up. A good run. Uh, Excellent downfield yeah. blocking by Beautiful. the Chargers. First and ten. Here's Mann out to the near side. Wilson across the 30 has some running room across the 25, the 20, and he's going to be wrapped up finally inside the 10-yard line. As Shane Meyer saved that touchdown, it's some kind of some kind of foot speed, isn't it? Uh, some Lots kind of good of moves there, right there. Beautiful catch, and you notice again it's at yards after the catch. Here comes the replay on it, and watch the acceleration by Wilson, and watch out in front the blocking. There's a great block by Justin Cook, and there's a block in the back by Rob, and now there is Johnny Wilson, and this is a save right here. Watch Johnny right there, grab my ankle and knock me down. First and goal, this time Mann will keep it. Gets outside, gets wrapped up as he crosses the five. Bruce Mann on the 
quarterback keeper for the Chargers. Second down and goal. You know, um, a run like that one that uh, Johnny Wilson just made sure helps a quarterback stats. Oh, yeah. It, yeah there's, those stats are really, I mean, and that's a lot of, a lot of yards of his stats are that. You know, I mean, he's had some great long passes, but a lot of them have been throw the ball at the guy. This is Dow's game. Throw the ball, let your, let your athletes run with it. Man, running room cuts inside the pylon with his second touchdown of the night. And the Chargers increase their lead on their opening drive here in the second half. It's 26-7, Dow High. A little hesitation and then an acceleration. So it's a little hesitation right here. Okay, now watch the acceleration. And running to the corner and big touchdown. Big, big touchdown. Johnny Wilson, who missed the last extra point, will now try and tack this one on out of the hold of Eric Huss. Ball is down, and once again, just a, about a replay from the last uh, effort as this one started out low and then was blocked and is no good. So it's 26-7 with 6.53 left in the third quarter. Vaughn Walker, who's a sophomore, well, there's going to be a lot of walkers hanging around. But Vaughn Walker blocked that. All right, so Vaughn Walker is in the middle, and he's he's a JV that was brought up, and he's going to go up in what, right there, and yeah, maybe the, well, that's number one. That's Curly. Well, well, at least you got a shout out to Vaughn Walker. I, mean, I hope he did because I think, mean, you know, another big guy. Walker Brothers, wow. They just keep coming. Well, this is what makes Dow so tough. You know, Midland High goes down and scores right before halftime and seemingly makes a game out of this. And here comes Dow right Dow back taking right the second half. Now, does Midland answer back? That, that becomes a crucial question at this point. Johnny Wilson will kick it away for the Chargers, and this time he lines it. And it goes into the end zone and will be a touchback, as that time I think the Kimmicks expecting another pooch kick, didn't get it, and they'll start from their own 20. Yeah, a very important drive coming up here for the Kimmicks, see if they can put a few first downs together and get back in this ball game. A number of years ago, they did a stat on you know where you start your drives, and and there was a uh, nine percent chance of success if you started from inside from the twenty or inside the twenty. Today, I don't think that stat holds. Back that was back in the olden days. That was huh? back when people ran football for a living. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that works. Here's Peyton DeWilt in the gun, back to pass, looking out on the far side and completes it. And run out of bounds is Martin Money. Nice catch and run that time and a pretty good pickup. Pass complete to number six. Excuse me, number 21. Martin Money. But you can see Dow's defensive philosophy is keep them in front of you. And that was the surprise of the touchdown in the corner because the uh, Dow defender stopped and allowed Vincent Walker to go into the corner. Well, Muddy must have stepped out just a little bit earlier than we previously thought, so it's only a three-yard gain, second down and seven. This time to wilt out to the near side across the 25 and out to about the 27-yard line goes Luke DeLong. So a very important third down play coming up for the Kimmicks. They're going to need third and four. And absolutely, they don't want to give the ball back to the Chargers, especially this kind of field position. Well, you got to look for Walker or Money in this situation. And I see Walker's up at the top of the screen. And that's exactly where he's looking. DeWilt. Goes out instead for DeLong, and he's going to pick up the first down despite an excellent tackle by Eric Huss on the far side of the field. That'll move the chains, though. 
I'd like to see that good open field tackling like that. Clean tackling. You know, it's not, they're not uh, jump on and grab tackles. First and 10, Chemex, DeWilt being chased out of the pocket, throws along the sideline, and it's incomplete intended for Vondre Warren. He was well covered at about the 48-yard line. It'll be second and 10. Good coverage by Josh Ritma. You know, one thing that uh, these high school coaches obviously teach that I think college coaches make and learn from is uh, they teach that good, clean tackling rather than grabbing for that ball all the time and, right. and sometimes giving those receivers another eight or ten yards. Absolutely. Second and ten. DeWilt this time with the handoff and finding some running room right up the middle is Money yeah, as he Vondre gets up Warren, to the 40. Vondre Warren. Oh, I'm sorry, Vondre Warren, number five with the carry that time. Ball carry by number five, Vondre Warren for the Kimmick. Up to the 42-yard line. Nice pickup. Vondre came into this ball game with 269 now this yards been, rushing. This has been traditionally a short short pass to Virgil Walker. And this time the pass is knocked down on the far side of the field. Nice defensive play there by the Kimmix. Yeah. Question, do you go for it or do you by kick? The, you kick. Fourth down, you kick. Even though you're down, they're gonna go for it. This is the game right here. If they don't make it, Dow will score and put the game away. Need to get to the 44-yard line for a first down. Snap back to DeWill. Looked like he was caught a little unaware of it. Lofts it out on the far side, and it falls incomplete. And the Chargers are going to take over deep in Kimmick's territory. Now, I'm going to tell you that I think the ball was snapped accidentally. They were going to go and try to draw him off sides. You, the ball was unexpected in his hands. Yeah, it was. And he was, uh, I think they were going to try to draw him off sides with a no snap and then punt, and it didn't work. Now the ball's on the 41-yard line, and Dow scores here, and I'm pretty well sure this game's over if, if Dow scores. Now we've got a flag. This is going to be some kind of a procedure call, I think, coming up against the Chargers. They looked like they were having a hard time getting set. Nope, no flag, so. Number 34, Spencer Stevenson was all over the field trying to find a place to get set. First and 10, Dow High. Man, with the handoff, Johnny Wilson, again, trying to get outside, now cuts it back, and is going to be hemmed in at the 40. May have picked up a half yard on that I play. See, I knew that was going to be a run, because you had Spencer Stevenson lined up as a wing back, and that, that, you, know, you just kind of get a little idea of where ball players are and what kind of play you're going to run. So Midland also knew that. I mean, I could see them pointing at the at the play. Second down nine for the Chargers. Man. Out to his right, now throws it out of bounds, and we got a flag. We're going to be a holding, holding call. Penalty. Yep, holding penalty. <laughs> holding against the Chargers, so this will be a big one to back them up a little bit. Holding called against the Chargers. See, these, these holding penalties are ugly. They're 10 yards from the spot. So it's not just 10 yards. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty before it's over. Yeah, they'll mark it off from the 46 of the Kimmix way back into Dow territory at the 44 of the Chargers. And they need to get to the Kimmick 32-yard line, so...
Second down and 24. Good opportunity here for the Chemex. Yeah, Dow's looked very sloppy on these last two plays. Very sloppy. Man, being chased out of the pocket to his right is going to be hemmed in and now yeah, throws it away. And let's see penalty. if we get a flag here as he obviously just dumped it out of bounds, but... Uh, no, nope. incomplete. There was a receiver down on the sideline. So it's going to be third down now for the Chargers as we've hit the four-minute mark here in the third quarter. A little sloppy play here by the Chargers on, on offense yeah. uncharacteristically. Again, they need to get to the middle and high 32. So it's third and 25 now. Long pass downfield by Mann, has a receiver and it's caught. And all the way down to about the five yard line goes the receiver that time, Justin, Justin Cook. Cook. My underrated player. Wow. He just makes plays all the time. It's a great, it was a great pass and just a terrific catch. And the separation that he gets, you're gonna see this out on the perimeter there. He's gonna all of a sudden develop separation and then run to the football. Watch him just run to the football. It's out there. Another great pass. And it's a great pass and he got out there and Luke DeLong makes an excellent play to, to save a touchdown. Moves it down to the four yard line, first and goal for the Chargers. And just when it looked like Kimmicks may have a chance at a stop, that happens. And here is Mann going for another touchdown and he is gonna be hemmed in. Touchdown, he was in. Made across the goal line, now we've got flags flying. Mann late took a hit. shot right at the uh, very end yeah, there. Yeah, late hit. It is a touchdown with 3.46 left here in the third quarter. That's gonna make it a 32-7 ball game. And let's see if we can look at replay here and figure out what happened at the end of this play. Man, easily into the end zone right there. And then his turn back. And I think you're right. I think the Kimmicks probably just didn't realize yeah, that right. the play was not right. over. Right, right. I, I think they'll pick up the flag. Yeah, they did. That was a good, very good call by the official. I mean, he stopped and spun when he realized he was in the end zone, but you can't tell a defensive guy to stop when the guy is still doing into a spin. So, yeah. So the Chargers huddling on the near side, and uh, they might very well go for two here with 346 left in the third period. They are going to go for two. Here's Mann, and there is the two-point conversion. Spencer Stevenson. As he hits Spencer Stevenson in the corner of the end zone, nice execution that time. And the Chargers up the lead to 34-7. Well, Sid, remember I told you that if, you know, Midland gives up the ball and does not get the first down on that, but I don't know what, happened there. I'm, I'm expecting that the ball was snapped incorrectly. Then Dow comes back, drives down the field on a beautiful pass, and everybody gets lost here on the replay. And Spencer Stevenson's all by himself. This is a linebacker's dream, you know that? Mm. Catch a ball in the end zone like that. So it's 34-7. Now this is a long way to come back for Midland, which means, what does it mean? It means I gotta throw the ball. And if you gotta throw the ball, now the next thing's gonna happen is, uh, uh, fumble, sack, interception. You've got to complete a lot of passes to make up 34-7. Well, it's one thing to score 34 points, but it's another thing to keep Dow from scoring anymore. Exactly. I mean, Midland hasn't proven they can stop Dow. Johnny Wilson has it teed up, and he kicks another one straight away. 
that DeLong will field at about the five yard line, cuts to his right, tries to get outside, does turn the corner and gets and, a good run back. And now you see why Dow pops it up. <laughs> That's exactly what's happened all year long. Nice return that time. 334 left here in the third period in this first round playoff game. The Chargers on top of the Kimmicks 34 to 7. Sid Allen and Frank Altimore bringing you the action here on MCTV. Chargers set up, and now the Kimmicks on the field, and DeWilt in the gun will keep it this time and cross the 35 to about the 37. You see, I'm kind of surprised DeWilt's carrying the ball. I mean, we had talked about this as the game went on, that he looked a little bit gimpy. Second down, eight. Clock ticking inside, three minutes to go now in the third period. Winner of this game will meet the winner of the Holly Fenton game. DeWilt out to the near side, throws in the passes. Knocked away and taken by Rob on the interception. He has a clear run ahead of him. One man to beat at the five, into the end zone for the touchdown. How do you like that? Tip ball, Rob, he's just right where you have to be. He Absolutely. Right where you have to be. Well, it looked like the Midland High receiver uh, had a chance to bring that one in. I believe it was DeLong. Just tipped up in the air and Rob at the right place at the right time. And I see a flag on the field. So it's interesting to see what the, the personal foul against Midland. And this is the play right here. Goes up into the air, a little bit high, and DeLong hits it, tapped up right into the hands of Rob. And now he's going to come back. And those long legs are hard to catch. I got to tell you, those, <laughs> they're hard to catch. So now it's a 40 to 7 ball game, and the penalty against Midland High here. There was a little altercation, the Midland, a uh, frustration penalty. And again, the uh, Chargers are going to go for two. And into the back of the end zone for the two-pointer. Now, you, you have to appreciate, Sid, we are now on running clock. 35-point differential, 42-7. Look at the replay on this. A lot of patience. Just waiting for his receiver to uncover. And there he is. So the Chargers have broken it open here in the third period as a 20 to seven halftime lead has turned into a 42 to seven lead with 240 left in the third period. All Dow high here in the second half. Look like the Kimmicks there at the end of the second quarter coach we're going to try and make a game out of this one but I told you that the game was decided it was over when Midland went fourth down and didn't make it it was fourth and two they, the plays got screwed up obviously Dow gets the ball goes down after a third and 25 and still makes the, the first down inside to get the score and now they're going to probably kick off in the 20, get the ball in the 20. Yeah, it's in the end zone. Well, it's not in the end zone. Now DeLong is going to return it, cuts to his left, and is met as he gets near the 20-yard line. So that's where the Kimmicks will put it in play first down. To the kickoff return by number 18, DeLong for the Kimmicks. 
And in fact, those spotted at the 19. So what do you do, Coach? What do you tell your team at this point? You're 35 behind. Never give up. Never give up. Stay with it. Stay with the plan. Get one touchdown at a time and then get a stop. Get another touchdown. Get a stop. But, you know, it's 222 in the third quarter, and that's uh, very difficult to come back from that. Peyton DeWilt. In the gun, hands off, and finding some running room over the right side is Vondre Warren. Pick up of about three yards on the play. Second down, seven. Josh Ritma and number 72, Zachary Peterson for the Chargers. So bring up second down and six for the Chargers, excuse me, for the Kennecks. Um, the Clock is down to a minute 35. But still a quarter of football left. There's still a quarter of football left, but we're now looking at a sense of urgency, and it's just Midland does not have that sense of urgency of moving. Get up on a line of scrimmage and go. Go, 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 go. There's got to be plays run here. Once again, Warren, and he's jammed up as he gets near the 25. Okay, I guess I just don't understand two run plays at this point. I mean, everything is, uh, to me, everything now is a two-minute drill. DeWilt uh, literally hobbled over to the far yeah, side. Yeah, he's really dragging. And see, I think that's really hurt their offense because the play of him making the fake and then keeping the ball, much like what Mann has done all night, that was DeWilt all year. Third down and four for the Kimmicks. DeWilt to his right, trying to find some receivers downfield and throws it out of bounds at the 40-yard line intended for Luke and DeLong over there. going to be another penalty. Here's here. a penalty. It's going to be on Midland. I've never seen Midland with so many personal fouls in the last couple games. It's just very uncharacteristic of a Kemic football team. So they'll back Midland High up just a little bit. I assume that was a dead ball foul. Oh, and there's an ejection. So penalty yardage and an ejection. Disqualification from the game. Looks like uh, Sean Nastasi, perhaps. I can't see on the far side of the field. Yeah, number 57. So with uh, just about 29 seconds left in the third period, referees sorting things out. Martin Money will be the punter for Midland High after they back the Kimmicks up here. And here is the step off. Still walking, still walking. All the way back to the 10 yard line. And now Martin Money will kick it away from deep in his end zone. Good snap. Nice high kick. Takes a good chemic bounce across midfield. That was a very good kick. Excellent kick. Still rolling and is going to be finally stopped at the 40-yard line. So that's where... The Chargers and the referee indicates let's start the clock and that's going to wind things down here in the third period. As the third quarter comes to an end here at Midland Community Stadium, Dow High Chargers in total control now by a score of 42 to 7. And with that, we got something that you want to take a look at here.
drives, touchdown, Penix. Good hard hit. Want to get in the game? Join MCTV as an excess TV producer and produce programs like baseball, basketball, football, and, and more. more. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to get started. Get in the game and let's produce a program. All right, let's do it. Uh, isn't that a great ad? <laughs> I keep killing our director, telling our director, Billy, that uh, you know he's got a future, really. <laughs> Not much of a future, but a future. Somewhat of a future. Yeah. 12 minutes left in this one, and the Chargers have the ball to start the fourth and final period at their own 40-yard line. And the handoff, and trying to find running room over the right side and stopped at about the 40-yard line for a short gain. Joey Lindell. Joey Lindell. Ball carried by number 20, Joey Lindell for the Chargers. Just at about the line of scrimmage, second and 10. So let's go ahead, coach, and uh, think about the playoffs uh, for Dow High here in the weeks ahead. Well, the first game is the winner of uh, Fenton and Holly, and at halftime, that was a 7-7 game. If Fenton wins, Dow goes, to Holly, Dow goes to Fenton. If Holly wins, Holly comes here next Friday night. And then from, then it is, from there on, it is... Uh, heading further south towards Detroit, the winner of Wall Lake Western, and uh, and, I, and I think Wall Lake Western will come out of that because they are just uh, an incredibly good football team. So it's, uh, it's, and then the winner of that game uh, will probably go against uh, Muskegon Mona Shores, uh, Lowell Muskegon, that, uh, that what I call the round of death over there with Traverse City, Lowell. Muskegon, Mona Shores, uh, there's a Zealand team in there. So it's, that's a very difficult uh, district regional. So the, the, the road is not, is not easy, but it never is. Here's Mann standing back at the 40 in the gun. Takes the snap and hands it off. And going outside and finding some running room and picking up some good yardage is Lundahl. Got a first down. First down. Well, this will be, uh, you know, I don't want to jump ahead too much here, but Dow's ninth straight win. Chargers have been very impressive, winning well, all of those games see, except one by uh, double digits. You see, there's no chance for Midland to come back with a running clock. That's why that touchdown right there was so critical. The intercepted pass into a touchdown. Because when you have the running clock, you ch the other team just doesn't give you the ball back. You can see what Dow's doing. Right. They're just going to run the football, take their time, and, and just run this clock down as far as they can. And I don't blame them. You avoid injury, avoid stupidity, don't let the other team back in the ball game, and allow some of your kids to play. And this is the other problem with the running clock, is that your backups don't get a chance to play. Yeah, there's a lot of penalties there. Flag flies there. So... What, what's your impression of this Dow team? How good are they at this point? Actually, Sid, they are as good as they want to be. They can beat anybody out there if they, because their passing attack is exceptional. But what's impressed me the most is how well their secondary has played uh, defensively. Their linebackers, and I was critical of their linebackers earlier in the year, and they were two veteran linebackers that just weren't making plays. And that was in the first game against Mount Pleasant. And, uh, and as the year has gone on, they've, they've gotten a lot better. But their secondary is exceptional. Uh, it's just, you know, where are you going to be as it, as it goes on? Are you going to be ready week after week? And can you avoid injuries to a to a uh, important player? Joey Lundahl getting some good work here in the fourth period. Moves it to the 47. Second down and 14 for the Chargers. Now we're down to 8.20 to go in this ball game.
coming across and uh, picking up a couple of blockers. And now we've got a flag as yeah, number 21 a, for the Chargers, Jeremy Cattardi. A, a hold or a block in the back. Penalty against the Chargers will be stepped off. This is kind of the broadcaster's nightmare time. You know, oh, start yes. <laughs> bringing oh, in a listen. lot of players. That and exactly. As I said, this is one of the problems with the running clock is that your backups, you, you've got to get backups to play. They're going to be valuable in this period of time. I, I, I would bring up my whole JV team in the playoffs with the hope that I could get a whole first-team JV offense and a whole first-team JV defense at least one series if the game was in hand. Man in the gun, letting the clock run down as much as he can. And hands off and across on the far side of the field trying to find some running room. And finally going down is Joe Bovey. Joe Bovey. Little guy, isn't he? Joe, Joe's, uh, yeah, he's little. Weaved his way through there and picked up a couple of yards, though. But here he is, you know, he's in the playoffs. Ball up to the 38. Third down. Kimmix have to get to the, or the uh, Chargers have to get to the Kimmix 48 yard line. Third down, 22. And the handoff is Bovee once again, and this time he crosses the 40, gets to the 41. But that'll bring up a fourth down punting opportunity for the Chargers. And this is Dow's first punt of the night. And get you, I think you know who the punter is. He's the guy that throws the ball. Mr. Man Mr. kicks Man, it. Mr. Man, he kicks it, he throws it. He's a, he's a, I would say, an old throwback single wing tailback. You know, they could throw, they could kick, triple threat. Good kick away. Fielded by DeLong at the 25. Makes a cut up to the 35 and is finally run out of bounds. That was a very good tackle. Well, a good season for the Kimmicks this year. They're going to finish the year seven and three. And uh, maybe not by Kimmick standards, but certainly by most standards, that's a very good year they've had. Kind of surprised at this point that I don't see Sam Vocal, who's a running back for Midland. And Sam was their leading rusher for the longest time this year and has not seen the field in the last couple weeks. So Sam is the son of uh, Brian Vocal, who was a tailback for me back in the uh, early 90s. Outstanding player for me. His son's an outstanding player. He's had a good season running the ball. Yeah. Second down and eight. Handoff goes to Warren, and this time Warren is stopped just at about the 40-yard line. Pickup of close to four. Third down and five. Kimmicks by uh, running the ball obviously know their fate and they're ready to go just as the Chargers are at this point. See what they come up with here on third and five. The Wilt will throw, throws out in the flat and completes it. Nice pass nice and catch. Nice pass and catch. Yes, it is. 
First down at the 46 yard line. Kenwick pass complete to number 85, Virgil Walker for the first down. Brought down by number six, Jared Muhammad for the charging. First and 10 for the Kenwicks on their own 46 yard line. First down, Kimmix. And DeWilt in the gun once again. This time the handoff goes to Vondre Warren. He finds a hole and slips across midfield to the Charger 49. Okay, by number five, Vondre Warren for the Kimmix. Vondre Warren came into this ball game with 269 yards and four touchdowns. He's added to that a little bit on his uh, rather shortish 5-6 frame. Chargers sending in a lot of substitutions on defense. Get some playing time. This time, good hole over the right side. Sam Vocal. Sam Vocal, who finally. you just mentioned. Yep, finally Sammy's in there. Sammy is a north-south runner. He only knows, he really does know where the end zone is. He's, he's not a dancer, he's not a spinner. He just gets his feet underneath him and runs. Third down and one for the Chemex, and we got a whistle. And let's see what the Call is here with two minutes and 12 seconds left in the ball game. And I think it had a something about the spot they wanted to uh, verify. Got a new quarterback in here for the uh, Chemex. And the handoff to the right side picks up the first down as number 16 in there for the Kimmix at quarterback. I don't have his number coach, so I don't know who that is. It's the JV quarterback, and I don't know who it is either. Um, Well, he's made two nice handoffs, and here's a vocal again, and this time he Cade plows Methner. for good yardage. Cade Methner, coach's son. Sophomore. That'll move the chains as the uh, Kimmins pick up yardage to the 30-yard line, and the clock still runs. One minute and five seconds left in the game. So the Kimmix uh, threatening here, see if they can put one more score on the board. Methner hands off to Vocal, and Vocal finding some running room again, gets down to the 25. And Vocal is not going down easily. No, he's not. Just about all 11 chargers on him that time. And we're winding down the last 25 seconds of this ball game. And coach, what uh, started out is a pretty competitive uh, first half. Looked like we're going to have a good second half of football. Turned all what a shock. Chargers. I am just. I, I have to tell you, Sid. I am shocked by the score. I thought Dow played very well, and I thought you know Midland just really didn't show. Remember, I told you at the start how difficult it was for us after a loss to Midland in the playoffs to come back the next week and play well. There's such a letdown that occurs. It's just it's just crushing. And now it's even been more crushing because you, you in essence got mercy twice, two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be difficult. Uh, you know, you're gonna examine every single thing on your program to, to do this. And the same with Dow. I mean, they're still gonna continue to look at their program, but they go on and they play a, really a team, that either of the two teams, that they should be able to beat, Fenton or Holly. 
and it gives them a chance to go on and be a regional champion if they win next week. Well, you know, you mentioned at the very beginning this playoff mentality. Yeah. Well, Dow uh, may have forgotten how to lose. Yeah. It's been so exactly. long ago that they lost. That's a playoff mentality. You know, I was uh, I was impressed with Dow's foot speed tonight and not impressed with Midland's foot speed. It was a, a definite difference. Dow not only was faster, but they were quicker tonight. But you know what? I get it. still got to tell you, I am impressed with the fact that nobody got sacked. There right. wasn't any sacks tonight. You know, and all that passing, the, the O-lines on both sides kept the quarterbacks free. Here we go. Se here's some second half highlights for us to look at. And obviously, they're going to be one way. Here goes Mann. This is the touchdown uh, right at the start of the second half. It's a nice pass play here. Beautiful pass. Long yardage. And Justin Cook, Justin Cook goes out and Touchdown saving tackle there by DeLong. And then man here going in. This is the play where yeah, I can understand where nobody, you know, he just stopped running on the goal line. And this is the two point play. Beautiful. That was Stevenson, the right. linebacker. And then this is the this is the interception for the touchdown. Little tip drill. Now watch the legs. Watch, watch the stretch. Big strides. Oh, wow. Those are big strides. We used to go one, two, one, two, which is every five yards, one, two. So you have a two and a half yard stride. And then this is an excellent pitch and catch for another touchdown. Wow. And that's it, Sid. Lots of highlights for the uh, Chargers there in the second half. Right. And unfortunately, right. the Kimmicks uh, that had moved the game to a 20 to seven deficit at the end of the first half and looked like they were poised maybe to make a comeback, but it just turned against them there in the third quarter so quickly as it can with this uh, Dow High team and the Chargers just broke away and uh, that was all she wrote. Well, Dow High's uh, skill players are just better. I mean, they're just better. They just make plays. Their quarterback is, a, is an outstanding quarterback and their receivers are spectacular. So. That's a big win for Dow and, uh, and a very sorrowful loss for Midland. So Fenton or Holly next week for the uh, Chargers as they move on in the playoffs. And uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that the uh, Chargers have that winning edge here. Absolutely. In 2015. And uh, Coach Frank Altimore, it's been a pleasure being with you Always again. Always a pleasure with you, Sid. Yeah. Uh, so they went to the bullpen and pulled me out for Dave Marsh. And... Uh, uh, it's a lot of fun being here, a lot of fun watching this great uh, Dow team and this great tradition with the Kimmicks, and the Kimmicks uh, in the first half certainly held their own. But again, our final score tonight, the Dow High Chargers over the Midland High Kimmicks by a score of 42 to 7. I want to thank all of you for joining us. For Coach Frank Altimore, this is Sid Allen. So long from Midland Community Stadium.